Last saving words of Jesus Christ our Lord on the cross, by Joseph of Jesus and Mary, of the work of God. It is with great love that the Word of God was incarnate by the power of the Holy Spirit and was born of the Virgin Mary, becoming man. That same Word was in the beginning before creation. It became flesh and dwelt among us. John chapter 1st Verses from 1 to 4. That same word, our Lord Jesus Christ, gave us the Holy Gospels as a testimony of His uncreated word, and on the cross during His sorrowful passion, Jesus summarizes His entire life and mission on the world with the utterance of the last seven words. Every word that comes from the mouth of God has the power to save us. Only say a word, and I shall be healed. Matthew chapter 8, verse 8 If we listen attentively to the last seven words of Jesus on the cross, we will have our minds opened and truly accept that He is the Christ. Indeed, this man is the Son of the living God. Matthew chapter 27, verse 54 And we all must come to look upon the one that we have pierced, Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10, because it is only through faith in Him that we can be saved. There on the cross by His holy wounds we have been healed. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, as we look and contemplate His wounds, the Father looks mercifully to us through those wounds in that precious blood. Jesus comes to intercede for us on the cross. He surrenders Himself to the Father. He offers His sacrifice as atonement for our sins. On the cross Jesus is the temple, the priest, the altar and the holy sacrifice. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. These meditations on the last seven words of Jesus on the cross will enlighten us as His light is being dimmed by our sinfulness as He dies on the cross, but only to come to live in our hearts. Since Jesus died so that we could live eternally, and as we die with Him in baptism, we partake of His resurrection on the last day. Romans chapter 6 verse 4 The Blessed Virgin Mary is at the feet of Jesus. He has entered into the most profound agony as His last moments on the earth are counted, and our Blessed Mother is also partaking in her soul of this atrocious agony that Jesus has to endure for the sake of all mankind. Let us listen to those last seven words of Jesus on the cross and take them into our hearts as a compendium of the Word of God for us, as a testament of Jesus who loves us so much. Let us model our lives by those last seven words on the cross. First word of Jesus on the cross, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. My dear Lord Jesus, you are crucified and lifted up on the cross. Your pain is beyond our imagination, and there is no part in your entire body that is not suffering to the limits. However, you are doing all this out of your infinite love for humankind. Your suffering has come to the summit, and now you are ready to intercede for us before our Heavenly Father, as you exclaim, looking up to heaven, Father, forgive them, they don't know what they do. They don't know and don't understand that I am paying for all their sins with my excruciating sufferings. They fail to understand that they all have crucified me. Sins has taken the form of torments for me. It has become nails, cross, insults, and hatred, which has come to life in their aggression against the innocent heavenly victim. I am prey to their wickedness. I am repaying with my divine mercy for all the evil, insults, and cruelty that they have committed. I have all souls in my soul, all their life is in my wounds and blood. I have taken their sins into my heart to satisfy the divine justice 
and now I am offering this holy sacrifice for their forgiveness, so that they can have life everlasting. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. My arms are outstretched in agony, but I offer them to embrace them and present them to you, Father. So I say with the voices of my wounds, pains, sorrows, and tears, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. And to all of you sinners, I say, come and look upon the one whom you have crucified. This is the moment of reckoning. I am calling you from the throne of mercy and grace. All sins will be forgiven if you accept me as your Lord and Savior. I don't want my sufferings to be in vain. Repent now and accept my holy offering to you. And the petition I make, Father, forgive them. I have been raised on the cross to fulfill my mission. But remember my words, when I am lifted up, I will draw all mankind to me. John chapter 12, verse 32. Being omnipotent and omnipresent, being God and man at the same time, I speak with words of eternal value. Therefore, I am lifted up here on this altar of the cross, and at the same time, this holy sacrifice is repeated by every consecrated priest when they raise me on the altar during Holy Mass, or when I am exposed in the Blessed Sacrament of the altar. It is from here that I repeat my words of salvation. Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. Father, forgive them, they don't know what they do. I say these words when my forgiveness is given to you through the priest in the sacrament of confession. Don't be afraid to come to the confessional to confess your sins, because the sins that priests forgive are truly forgiven by me. John chapter 20 verse 23 Second word of Jesus on the cross. Today you will be with me in paradise. Today you will be with me in paradise. The second word of Jesus on the cross is an unexpected gift of grace to a dying thief who is confessing that he is the Christ and the Lord. In his infinite goodness, Jesus gives away his love, saying, Today you will be with me in paradise. The grace of God touched the heart of this thief when he realized and acknowledged that he was next to God. He considered his sinfulness in contrast to the holiness of the innocent man being put to death next to him. He accepted that he was being punished because he indeed was a criminal. But in a moment of contrition, he surrendered his misery to Jesus, saying, Lord, remember me when you enter your kingdom. He accepted that Jesus was a king and Lord he not only expressed his repentance, but did an act of adoration. Jesus responded to his petition, saying, Today you will be with me in paradise. The agony of Jesus in his deepest taste, his pains are innumerable, from the top of his head to the palm of his feet. He wants to conquer all souls, and he does not despise anyone who comes to him with a contrite heart. Dear soul, you have come to my throne of grace. I am here to forgive you. I don't count your sins. I count your repentance. And if you indeed have tears of repentance, I will treasure them as precious pearls, and I will forget all your sins. Imitate this robber, who being a sinful man, came with confidence before me, the grace of God and ask me to have pity on him. At the moment of your death, I will be happy to say, Today you will be with me in paradise. If you study my last seven words carefully, you will come to understand that I am love, that I don't reject anyone who comes to me. In fact, I invite you all to come into my kingdom. I want to save you today. Do not go away. Stay with me, meditating my sufferings for your sins and the sins of all mankind.
Let this word of mine be engraved in your heart. Today you will be with me in paradise. You are saved by my grace, not by anything that you can do for God. What is required of you is to act justly, to love mercifully, and to walk humbly before my presence. Micah chapter 6 verse 8 If you live by my will, you will be in me and I will be in you, because my words abide in you and you obey my commandments. John chapter 15 verse 4 Prepare yourself for the last day of your life when you want me to say to you, Today you will be with me in paradise. Be my disciple. Do not keep these words to yourself only. Proclaim them to everyone. Let my salvation reach the ends of the earth. Tell them that I forgive sins and that I want to save them. I assure them that they can also be with me in paradise. Third word of Jesus on the cross. Woman, behold your son, and to John and everyone, behold your mother. Lord Jesus, you are suffering so much. You are the man of sorrows. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 3. You are a good father who feels so much pain for leaving your children in the world. You don't want to leave us orphans. You are the new Adam. First of Corinthians chapter 15 verse 45. The one who gives life in the spirit the one whose precious blood will nourish the souls of all the children of God, born of the Spirit after your death. You have given us everything that is possible to come from you, and yet you do not want to leave us orphans. So you look at your mother with tenderness, and establishing the new creation in the Spirit, you say to her, Woman, behold your son. You are the woman spoken of in Genesis, the one who crushes the head of the serpent, the new Eve, the mother of all the children of God, spiritual beings begotten at the altar of the cross through my suffering and yours. And then you look at all humanity in the person of John. You don't need many words, so you finish your creation of love, saying to him, Behold your mother. I want you all to understand that the first creation failed because of sin. However, in the plan of God, everything has been accounted for, so the parents of the new creation of love come as the answer of God to sin. I am the new Adam, the father of all within humanity. I encompassed all humankind in my body, soul and spirit. Being God and man, nothing is impossible for me. Therefore, I suffer the punishment of sin in exchange for the new life in the Spirit for my children. Sin brought death to the world. I am grace, and I bring life to the world through that grace. When I say, Woman, behold your son, I am saying, Dear Mother, I am making you the new Eve, the mother of all my children. The first creation descended from the flesh, but this new creation descends from your immaculate heart and bears my holiness in yours. I give you all mankind. Behold your children, dear mother, and take care of them. In addition, I must say to all of you who find this difficult to accept, I remind you that I received my sacred humanity from the flesh and blood of my mother. As the only begotten Son of the Father, my divinity was united to my humanity and the humanity of my mother in what is called the hypostatic union. This was done by her consent and by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so I became true God and true man. Having this in mind, I said to my mother, Woman, behold your son. And I say to you now, behold your mother. My dear child, consecrate yourself to the Immaculate Heart of my Mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary. That way I can say to her, Woman, behold your son. And then I can say to you, Son or daughter, behold your mother. Be her consolation in her sorrows. Do for her what I would like to do myself. 
Love her with all the love that I love her. Love her as your heavenly mother, who has great authority in heaven, and who always obtains any favors for you through her powerful intercession. The love you give to my mother glorifies me, and it does not take away from my glory. On the contrary, it gives you the grace to have a powerful advocate before my justice, and it pleases me because you accept my mother as your mother. O oh, my dear mother, help, assist, and behold your children. In addition to you all, I say, my dear children, behold your mother. Fourth word of Jesus on the cross, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Dear Lord Jesus, all of your friends and the apostles abandoned you. They were afraid except for John, your faithful disciple, your holy mother, and some women who accompanied you in your painful passion and remained at the foot of the cross until you breathed your last breath. Despite this holy company surrounding you, with agonizing voice, you said to the Father, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Father, I have done your holy will. I have given everything that my humanity united to my divinity could possibly give to my children. I would like to save them all, but I see so much rejection and malice. Father, do not abandon me. I need your consolation at least to compensate for the indifference of the human race. I love them so much that I am willing to forgive them all. My open arms are here to welcome them. My holy wounds are open to absorb their sinfulness, and as I forgive them, I want to wash them with my precious blood and give their souls life again. And yet, I feel that they turn their backs to my suffering, and they ignore my sacrifice for them. They are being torn away from my soul, as they choose to despise me and give themselves to their new father, the devil. Souls. Souls, why have you abandoned me? What have I done to deserve such disdain? I gave you life. I breathed my breath into your souls so that you could live forever. But now you are inhaling the poison of the world. You will surely die in your sins and be condemned unless you come to my mercy. I want to forgive you. Come to me and take advantage of my sufferings because by my holy wounds you are healed. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I am not alone. In my soul live all living souls. I encompass them all. I have bought them all at the price of my death. But this death that I am experiencing in my soul is the eternal death of those condemned souls that are casting themselves into hell through their own decision. They refuse the light that I am, but they accept darkness and death as their lot. My dear soul, do not abandon me. Come to this fountain of forgiveness here at the cross, the throne of mercy. My crucified body is your only salvation. I am the Lamb of God. I see many souls still doubting after more than 2,000 years. Do you not know that I am eternal? I am the same eternal God in the glory of my Father before creation. And as I am here on the cross making expiation for your sins, I am the same eternal God being raised here as when I am raised at the altar by any of my consecrated priests or when I am exposed in the Blessed Sacrament. I am the true God that you encounter in all the seven sacraments of the Catholic Church. I am the eternal God, the one who opens the gate of eternity for everyone. I am the way, the only way to the eternal Father. My God, my God, why have they forsaken me? Why have they abandoned the one who never abandons them? My dear soul, these words are for you. Do not turn away from me. Do not abandon me. Do not leave me hanging on the cross suffering for your sins. 
Repent and remove these nails from my hands and feet. Heal my wounds. Accept me as your Lord and Savior. Eat of my flesh and drink of my blood in the Holy Eucharist. I am the Lord your God, the bread of angels, the food of your soul, the bread of life. Fifth word of Jesus on the cross, I thirst. O oh my Jesus, I suffer to hear that you are thirsty, and I feel so useless before such painful sight. Yet, I need to understand what you are experiencing, and at the same time, what you want me to do. Your body is suffering the bitterest agony. You have lost so much blood that your whole body is almost dry of the liquid of life. The fire of your love has been burning in your soul and drying up your body as well. You who are the eternal fountain of living water, John chapter 4 verse 14, who offered this water to the Samaritan woman to quench her thirst forever. Feel now the drought of your entire humanity. I thirst. The fountain of living water in my humanity is drying up because of my passion. I am pouring this out in the form of all my sufferings because I have to irrigate this world with the water of my grace, and I thirst as I reach out this impoverished and dry spiritual land with my sacrifice. I thirst for the love of all souls to quench the thirst of my soul. I am not so concerned about my physical thirst, but the thirst of my soul. As I am the eternal fountain of living water, I desire to drink all souls and make them a part of me. When I leave this earth, I want to take with me all souls into everlasting life. I thirst for your love. Would you satisfy my thirst by loving me and accepting the sacrifice of my love for you? I thirst for your will. Would you give up your evil ways and come back to me so that you may quench my thirst? I thirst for your eternal happiness in me. I can see how you suffer in your life, and I would like to bless you if you satisfy my thirst. I thirst. Please do not give me the vinegar of your indifference and resistance to my will. I thirst. If you could give me at least one drop of your tears of repentance, I would be so satisfied. I suffer so much because I see you are thirsting for the poison of the evil one, who has deceived so many souls with the black waters of his well of death. Six words of Jesus on the cross. All is consummated. All is accomplished. With this exclamation, which comes from your dying humanity, you tell the Father how you have exhausted all your human capacity to suffer in your body, mind and soul, for the sake of all human beings. You have wounds covering your entire body, some penetrate deep into your bones, and your skin has been removed to open way for the atrocious wounds caused by our sins. Most of your precious blood has been shed as a fountain that is drying up. You are God, still powerful and omnipotent, but you have surrendered your sacred humanity to the Father up to the point that everything is consummated. All is accomplished for the eternal destiny of the human race. You have perfected your holy offering in every detail. There remains no part outside or inside your sacred body which has not been subject to the cruelest punishment. All is consummated. All is accomplished. I suffered infinitely for the infinite number of souls. I paid for all their sins. I have accomplished the redemption of all mankind. There is nothing else to do, Father. So I am ready to go back to your glory. Now I speak to every soul. I have consummated my entire humanity, united to my divinity. For you, my dear soul, what can you give me in return? Are you ready to change your life for me and make reparation for these cruel torments that I suffered for you? I am not asking you to climb high mountains or to do impossible things. I only want your heart. 
so that I can live in you. I want you to accept me in your life as your personal Savior and Lord. That way I can accomplish in your life the desires of my heart. When I was dying on the cross, I went through your entire life. I paid for each one of your sins personally, just as I paid equally for every human being, past, present, and future. Understand that you are very dear to me. You cost me so much. Just imagine that I died for you alone and you will understand the depths of my love for you. My sacrifice has been consummated for you. All has been accomplished. Once you submit your will to my will, once you surrender your humanity to my divinity, once you die to yourself so that I can live in you, only then I will exclaim to the Father, all is consummated for this soul. Now, I can be glorified not only in heaven but on earth. All is consummated, my dear soul. I have done my part, and now you have to do yours. Start now. Do not delay. My salvation is waiting for you. I thirst, but I am still the fountain of living water. Come and drink from this well. Become like a little drop of water and come to be lost in the infinite ocean of my grace. Seventh worth of Jesus on the cross. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Lord Jesus, your life on earth is about to expire. Your heart is going to give its last heartbeat. You have depleted the treasure of your holy humanity on the cross. And with your last breath, you say to the Father, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Father, into your hands I place my soul, which contains all souls. I place all my children now in your hands, because my life as a human being on this earth has come to an end. I have redeemed them, and now I go into your glory. I have given them the treasure of my humanity, so that they can enter into our divinity. I have made the bridge between the dust of this earth and the light of heaven. My death now opens the doors of heaven to everyone. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit, and now I say my final word to all souls. My dear soul, you have been exonerated of all your sins with my sacrificial offering on the cross. Now you must respond to the divine mercy of God that has offered you divine blood to cleanse the filth of your soul. All you have to do is to look at my suffering and accept my sacrifice on the cross for you. Give up your pride and repent of your sins. Come humbly to my throne of mercy and be restored for eternal life because by my holy wounds I healed you. Furthermore, as you experience my forgiveness, dwell on your guilt and make reparation constantly, so that you may purify your soul completely. Let my sacramental blood purify you, detach your soul from the things of this world, be generous, give alms, and have your soul ready to meet me at the door of eternity. Do not be afraid to place your existence in the hands of your Father. After all, what you will receive is a blessing for surrendering to the divine will. Then say daily to me and to the Father, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Say, Father, into your hands I commend my soul. Purify it with your light and let me experience your blessing. Remove the dark cloud of my indifference, my resistance to your will, my sinfulness, and my guilt. Say, Father, into your hands I commend my life. Let me experience death to all my human attachments and even to my own individuality, so that I can enter into you and become one with you. I in you and you in me. Say, Father, into your hands I commend my heart. Cleanse it and purify it so that it serves you as your throne, your altar, your earthly dwelling, 
so that you may be pleased entering into this little temple made with your hands for the purpose of your glory. Help me to cast out all those demons and false idols that I had once enthroned in your holy altar when I was a prisoner of sin. Fortify your temple with grace so that I may always be alert and never let any temptation of the devil, the world, or the flesh possess what belongs to you. I am yours, Father. I give myself totally to you. I surrender my life to you, united to the life of Jesus on the cross during his last moment. Father, into your hands I command my spirit. If you like this video, please give us a like. Subscribe to our channel, The Work of God. Share us on social networks. And don't forget to leave your valuable comments. In the description of this video, you will find the important links to our spiritual reflections and other topics for these times, and a download link for the last seven words of Jesus on the cross. God bless you.